welcome back to my channel and welcome to this series making art with the masters with edward gory in this first episode i thought it would be good to go through a little bit about who edward gory was a bit about supplies for each of the projects that i will also detail in this first episode and a little bit about resources that I've collected or that you might find useful as you work through this series with me. So first, let me tell you a little bit about who Edward Gorey was and why I've chosen to work with him at this time. Edward Gorey was born in 1925 and he died in 2000. He was 75 years old. He was a precocious child who taught himself to read and draw when he was a toddler. And he grew up in Chicago. Um, his mother was from an upper class family and his father was a beat cop, I think for a while. Um, Edward Gorey was a pretty strange dude at the time. He was someone who wore a fur coat and rings on all of his fingers. He loved bats and cats and the Balanchine Ballet in New York City. He never married or even ever seemed to have a romantic relationship. He was very genial and very charming, uh, but for the most part, he seemed to prefer his alone time to socializing. Like most artists that I admire and am drawn to, Edward Gorey worked across quite a few mediums, but first and foremost, he considered himself a writer. Now, he did go to art school, and he made a living with illustration. He did, of course, illustrate his own books, and you'll see that, but he also illustrated a lot of other books, particularly book covers, uh, pu other publishings. Um, he created a animated intro for, I think it was PBS Mystery Theater, yeah, he was, he was an interesting chap, and you can learn a lot about him. I picked up a couple of books. One is this Ascending Peculiarity, and this is Edward Gorey on Edward Gorey, mainly because it's interviews. He actually participated in quite a few in interviews throughout his life. So what you have are uh, accounts of each of these interviews and within these interviews, there are pictures of him. There's um, his art interspersed throughout this book. As you can see, he was really um, into pen and ink drawings, and he seldom actually used color in his own for his own work. So other resources. I'd like to share and supplies I'd like to talk about. The Fan Todd pack was, is an oracle deck. There are 20 cards with various illustrations from various books. It comes with a little booklet that tells the meaning of each card. So that was interesting. He wasn't particularly into the occult, I don't think as a practice, but he was very interested in true crime growing up as the child of a, a police officer. And you know, Chicago was very violent back in those days. And I think he just developed a fascination for that. Another um, resource I got is this little book, The Evil Garden. I got it because I wanted to explore this plant world that he drew and created and conceived of. Very whimsical. Uh, these little line drawings are expressive and I just absolutely love it. So that we can use as a project. This Amphigory, it's essentially a compilation of 15 books and what I like about it, <clears throat> you can get all, you know, all 15 of these books and you can go through them and read them. These are some really well-known ones that he did, but what I like is that you have in one book 
a lot of his illustrations so that you can get a real good idea about his style and about the hallmarks of his style, which are black and white pen and ink, right? But within that, it's also lots of texture that he used, very detailed, cross hatching is huge. He uses it to achieve uh, almost black, you know, complete blackout in some of these. It's all cross hatching. He rarely used color. This one um, story, the bug book, I think, he uses just the primaries. Oh, well, he's got green there. Red, yellow, blue, and then green, I think. He rarely colored his own stories or his own illustrations. Again, it's mainly, it's almost all black and white pen and ink, very whimsical. The subjects, the people, people thought that Edward Gorey was English because I guess his, the people that he drew have this very sort of 1920s, 30s, 40s maybe, English aesthetic, I suppose. So that's Amphigory. The Dwindling Party is a pop-up book. I actually got this as a vintage book. You can't get this new anymore. So I try to be careful with it, but it really is pretty cool and amazing. I thought we could use this to create a couple of our own projects as just a resource and inspiration. I picked up this sticker book. This was pretty cheap on Amazon. I believe it was under $9. And it's got almost 200 stickers. A lot of them are in color, although there's still some black and white. And they're all his illustrations, images from his books. We can use this as a project as with for one of our projects. I picked up this coloring book from a local art store. I don't think it was very expensive. I'm not going to use it to color. I really just wanted to get a look at his style. You can really see his use of pattern, the line drawing, that, that again, that es English sort of aesthetic here. Very whimsical, you know, these little animals. <clears throat> You know what this reminds me of? He was known, I think I told you that he would wear like these fur coats and rings on all of his fingers. Apparently when he was a child, a kid, he was living in Florida and he had an alligator that he put a, would put a leash on it and walk it around as a pet. Very, very fun, whimsical. Well, I get, some of the subject matter is pretty dark. I'll, I'll give you that. Speaking of dark, so here's the um, little toy theater he created, and I thought we could use this as inspiration for, for paper dolls. So he loved Dracula. He loved this story. He was fascinated by it, so he ended up creating this, and it's essentially you can pop these out and create these little paper dolls and even pieces of furniture. There's several acts. And he created these stage pieces where you could actually set this whole thing up. It's pretty cute, pretty cool, not very expensive. At some point, I will set this up and share that process with you when we go to create our own paper dolls. So the supplies that I would like to suggest that we use because he mainly used pen and ink, I have a set. I've only ever used this one nib on this one, but it would be fun to try these other nibs. I also have a glass dip pen that I will try to use. I've actually never used this ink. I do have some other inks. By the way, these uh, dip pens are pretty cheap to pick up. Amazon has them, most art supplies stores, Michaels has them. 
little Indian jar of Indian ink. This is black. I do have um, this jar, this little bottle of purple ink that I picked up a few years ago. A friend recommended it, so I picked up a bottle of it, and I do love it. The color's amazing. I also have a blue. I think this came in a sketch box or art box that I used to get, subscription box. Aqua ink, it's watercolor ink, it's blue. I have a black, carbon black ink, Liquitex ink. I also have the FW acrylic ink, white, and gold, of course, because I love gold. I have a few little brushes. You see, these are very small, but they're not as small as you can get. Of course, you can get much smaller brushes. I may try to make marks with brushes as well. And then I also wanted to um, try using regular pens. I'm just pulling out stuff out of this pencil case. So I basically have an assortment few tools, a couple of rulers, something I can push the ink around with, a couple of sharpeners, mainly because I don't think that Edward Gorey sketched out in pencil. Maybe that's a good question. I'll find out for future episodes. We'll discuss, but I definitely will. So I have um, some hard pencils here, eight and a nine H that I'll probably use. I do have a couple of black wing pencils that I love. These may be too soft. I probably won't use these. So a couple of hard pencils. And then I have an assortment of pens that I really like. Of course, some microns. These are small. See that? 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.005 black. Um, again, just an assortment of small nibbed pigment pens. 0 0.01, 0 0.03. I have these little ballpoint pens and these are tiny as well. This Muji pen and then this um, Pentel hybrid Technica. I love these little ballpoint pens. They're really fine and black as well. I probably won't use this. It's just a Copic brush pen. Just grabbed it when I was pulling my pens together. And then this is just another little pigmented ink pen. It's a point one, very fine nib. And of course, my favorite, a big pen. So just an assortment of pens, you know. Hey, if all you've got is a big pen and some copy paper, that'll work. You just, it's just paper, right? This is just a little journal. It's um, 270 GSM. This paper's fine. It's not the best paper in the world, but it's fine for what we're going to use it for and I'm going to use it for a number of projects. Speaking of projects, so this first episode, I just wanted to give you a quick background about Edward Gorey, who he was, and maybe you're interested in going along on this little journey. These, I have done this before with other artists and I have really loved it. I've learned a lot about the artist, but also it's improved my art, whether I end up doing that or not, you know, so I, I doubt I'm gonna become a pen and ink artist, you know, an illustrator in this style, but I wanna try some of the things that Edward Gorey did. I think I told you he, he was pretty eclectic in all the things that 
he created, you know, aside from these pen and ink drawings, these illustrations, and these books, he also created some puppets, some, you saw, an oracle deck, pop-up books, paper dolls. So the next episode, we're going to start exploring his techniques. And that is why we will use an art journal and I'll use some of these art supplies that I just went over. If you wanna follow along, you could grab a dip pen and a bottle of ink, probably for less, for both things, probably be less than $10. Again, you could use copy paper. If you want to pick up a journal, this particular journal, $10. They have, there's much cheaper journals available or, you know, grab some copy paper, fold it in half, staple it or not, and you're good to go, okay? So that's episode number two. Be sure, please, to hit like if you liked this video subscribe and you'll get notices when the next video is coming. I intend to put these out one a week each Sunday so that uh, we should be done in about six weeks. This, I intend this to be a six week class. I will try to create some resource lists and downloadables that I'll put in the description box so that you can um, have resources at your hand. Don't forget, I did create a playlist for Edward Gorey and I will link it in this video. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you next time. Bye!